There are two kinds of cleaning situations for carpets. General wide area cleaning and heavy spot messes, such as a spillage. In this video, I'll focus on spot mess cleaning. It makes a difference to how you should clean a spot mess, depending on whether it's wet or dry. So an October drink or pet mess that soaks the carpet needs more work than a simple splodge of ketchup or a dry mud stain. The upshot is that you get the quickest and best stain removal using non-water based methods, namely a harmless solvent based spray like Dissolve and some Zorb micro sponges. If the stain is really wet, pre-cleaning with a very lightly damp cloth with dish liquid to remove the water and allowing to fully dry works best. I'll demonstrate this with the worst food stain on a really thick deep carpet with waterproof backing. And I also compare it to the best residential carpet cleaning machine on the market to show why all water based carpet cleaners are actually a huge consumerism scam and why you should never use one to clean carpets. If you have a dry stain, like dry mud, the quickest way to clean is to sprinkle down some Zorb micro sponges, brush them in, wait half an hour to dry, and vacuum up. The moist particles deliver just the right amount of cleaning solvent, scrub through the fibres, and reabsorb the dirt they dilute. This short clip is from the longer video linked to in the description. If you have a low moisture but intense sticky stain, such as a splodge of ketchup or other gooey food, then wipe up as much of the mess as possible with a dry towel until it's as dry as you can get it. Spray three or four times with some Dissolve to dissolve the stain into a solution and blot it out using a dry towel. Repeat the spraying and blotting to gradually eat away at the mess and remove it layer by layer. The solvent is good at getting in between the fibres and melting out all the sticky oily substances ready to be mopped up by the towel. This step by step approach is a smart way to remove heavy messes like this because it controls the amount of liquid in the carpet so it doesn't get too wet and doesn't drip down the fibres to the base of the carpet where you'll really struggle to get it, especially for thick carpets. These spray solvents dry much faster than water and don't allow mould, bacteria and mites to grow. Really bad stains can take a few minutes of blotting to get it all out, but even though it's a hassle, there's no way around it, and it's much quicker than any other method and gets better results. You can finish off with some micro sponges to make sure any mess that might have got deeper down is removed. Micro sponges are really good for deep cleaning to the base of a carpet. Things are a bit more complicated with water heavy stains, or the cats sick on the carpet. These stains have a lot of water in them, and it often sinks right down to the base of the carpet. These stains are a nightmare to remove, no matter what, so prevention is always better than cure wherever possible. First thing to do is to get rid of any chunks or other bits. Scoop them using a tissue and dump into a bowl. Wear gloves and a mask if it's a nasty or harmful stain, like sickness. Because the carpet is already soaked all the way through, you need to get rid of the water in there and let it dry. There's no point in using solvents or wet stains because that defeats the whole purpose of avoiding water and the water stops it working properly and drying as quickly. Micro sponges will also absorb the water and take ages to dry, so will actually make it worse. It turns out the best way to deal with this is to use a lightly damp microfiber cloth soaked in dish liquid. Get a microfiber cloth, squirt some good quality dish liquid on it that's high in anionic sulfactants. Soak it in water and mush it around so the dish liquid is well mixed. Squeeze out the excess, then rinse and wring three times to dilute the concentration of soap in the cloth. Do a final ring, folding it up into a block and keeping pressure on it for ages to get rid of as much water as possible. It's now lightly damp and full of water based cleaning agents. Rub it over the stains in all directions using different parts of the cloth. This removes most of the stain and more importantly also soaks up a lot of the water in there. If it's a big area, you might need to rinse the cloth and wring out to keep it clean. It could take a few minutes to get to a point where it's not getting any cleaner or drier. If you've done it right, a dry paper towel shouldn't be wet when you press on the surface. 
But here's the problem. If you've got a really thick carpet, all that water in the original stain will have seeped down to the bottom. If you poke a dry towel down to the base, you can see it's soaking up all the water down there that's difficult to get to, even on a carpet with waterproof backing like mine, which stops it getting into the underlay where you'd never be able to get it. So you've got to keep blotting and poking down into the pile and squeezing to try and get out as much of the liquid as possible. This might take a few more minutes. At this stage, it's as clean as you're going to get it with water-based cleaning methods. I put a cool fan on it and left it to dry overnight, although it will take days for the very base of the carpet to dry completely in a dense carpet like this. This is why prevention is better than cure. Once it's mostly dry, you're back to the stage where you can use dry cleaning chemistry. Spraying with dissolve and blotting helps get out much more of the stain that the soap and water-based chemistry struggles with. After a few minutes of blotting, you can scrub in some micro sponges to get deeper down. Using a brush like this can help separate them to avoid them clumping together and taking longer to dry. Brushing in all directions helps work them down deep into the carpet and reach the fibres near the base. It takes about 30 to 60 minutes to dry, depending on how many were used, and then you can vacuum them up. If the stain is still there, it might need additional applications, but most stains will be out by now. These are deliberately severe stains with very staining foods. Dealing with water-based heavy wet stains like this does take a bit longer, but you've got to deal with the water first before moving over to dry cleaning chemistry, so it's a two-step approach, and you do get the best overall results in the end. So how does this compare with a carpet washer? This is the latest Fax carpet washer. It's widely regarded as being the best performing carpet washer on the market and gets top marks by a lot of reviewers. From an engineering point of view, it's a really nice machine and the best on the market in my opinion. It costs £250 and has multiple layers of different types of scrubbing brush, can wash and rinse the carpet and supposedly out cleans the best commercial grade cleaners you can rent. There are many reviews of this product out there. So, nice clean carpet all messed up again with the same stains. I'm using all the official cleaning solutions that come with this machine exactly as the instructions recommend. After removing the chunks and lightly blotting, I use their pre-spray. This is a water-based soap solution. They say to spray on without oversaturating and leave for up to 5 minutes. This machine automatically mixes the official cleaning solution with warm water to get the concentration right, so I only needed to fill with water and put the cleaning solution in the other reservoir. It was set to wash and to deep clean. I followed the cleaning behaviour the manual recommends and also used the boost injection trigger which puts extra solution down for really tough stains as they recommend. I cleaned using several passes with drying passes interjected which is far more than for normal cleaning. You can see the machine does a decent job at making sure the surface of the carpet is dry, although not as dry as using a cloth like I did before. Unfortunately, these stubborn stains were still there. They do suggest you repeat a second time for stubborn stains. So I applied more pre-spray, waited a few minutes, then had another go, doing many passes with extra soap solution, interjected with drying passes, as the manual recommends. I finished off with a full rinse stage to remove the soap, I went over dozens of times to do a final dry until no more water was being sucked into the head. Again, you can see the surface was left very dry, but this is the interesting part. They claim this machine cleans better than the best dry vacuum on the market, but that's only if you soak the carpet. What they don't tell you is that by soaking it, you're diluting all the stains and they run down the fibres to the base. 
The measurement they use to justify the claim that it cleans better than a dry vac is based on the dry particles that are left. This is misleading though, because much of the dirt is deliquesced into solution and is now stuck to the fibres and all at the base of the carpet. You can see here if you open up the fibres that some of the dirt has been washed to the bottom. If you stick a dry towel at the base, despite all this suction the machine has and how dry the surface is, it's soaking wet. It actually took days to dry at the base, and all that time the dirty water down there is a perfect breeding ground for mites, bacteria, mould and fungus. It actually started to smell a bit in the end when the pile was opened up, and the stains were still there, as were the odours. Again, this is the best carpet washer out there, using the official solutions exactly as instructed for the deepest clean, and yet it leaves this and doesn't clean as well as a cloth and dry cleaning solvent based chemistry. As well engineered as this machine is, carpet washers are a huge consumerism scam. They're a stupid piece of technology that wrongly approaches the problem. Most people that use these just show you all this lovely dirty water and brag about how well this thing has cleaned. The proof is in the dirty water, look, they must be right. But what these cretins never show you is what's left behind. I couldn't find a single source on the entire internet that actually showed what I'm showing you here. These cleaners apply too much liquid just by definition of how they work, and the dirty water gets all the way to the base of the carpet, where it never would have been for some stains, and makes clean parts dirty. They can't extract all the water or the dirt from that depth, even with their super suction, and so all they've done is create a perfect, food-rich breeding ground for biological nasties as evidenced by the smell by the time it dried. And even on the surface of the carpet, the best product available just didn't remove the stains as well as a cloth and dry cleaning chemistry, which costs a tiny fraction of one of these machines. And there are other problems with carpet washers. Ignoring the best ones costs hundreds. This thing is bulky, takes a lot of storage space, is really heavy and extremely noisy. You've got to get it out, unwind the cord, plug it in, fill it up with water, pour in soap solution, and fiddle with dials. And when you're done, you've got to empty out all the dirty water, clean all the parts and tanks out as the manual recommends, Pour the unused soap solution back in the bottle, let it all air dry, taking up space. There are just so many bits to maintain. The floor head continually drips water, which slowly siphons out of the system, leaving huge wet patches. And then you've got to reassemble it all and put it all away. Total hassle. And again, deep pile carpets take days to dry at the base, where dirty water gets to. It's hugely less convenient and more time consuming from start to finish to use one of these machines. They're treated as a quick fix super machine, but it doesn't do as good a job when you look more carefully, and people need to understand this. There's no silver bullet for bad carpet stains, particularly ones that have a lot of water that's soaked deep down. If you use a carpet cleaner thinking you're doing a good job in no time at all, you're mistaken, and are actually just making a mess deeper down and breeding biological nasties. The top of the carpet might be dry in a few hours, but the base isn't, and apparently no one checked. You have to understand what cleaning does and how to do it properly. If it's a worst case water based heavy stain, use a lightly damp soapy cloth to get the water out and the worst of the stain. When it's dry, move over to solvent based chemistry and cleaning using dissolve and zorb, or equivalents. You can start with those if it's not a wet stain. It's much faster and cheaper than carpet washers from start to finish, and achieves a much better result in a much smarter way. It's still a hassle, but there's nothing you can do about that. Using Zorb is also the best way to generally clean wider areas of carpet for the same reasons, and there are videos showing this in the description. I hope this helped you learn something, and thanks for watching.